Good thingy to you, gentle viewer. We trust this finds you in good spirits, and not subject to some vile act that might elicit pain screams from your gaping mouth hole. No? Oh, very well then. Today's tale comes from room X4. Ah, but of course. Having been built straddling dimensions, this hotel does seem to attract guests with intriguing technology. Now you know I can't reprogram you to dance the Macarena. It's beneath me, both as a scholar and as a gentleman. The least mechanical of the pair approached the guest. He introduced himself as Dale and his companion as Gunther362. My name's Laddie. Can I lick your robot? Mmm, you don't want to lick him, boy. He don't taste like one of them fancy steampunk models. He proceeded to inquire as to the reason Laddie had solicited their services. Papa's time machine done broke. Now he's stuck in the 42nd century. I have to scratch my own crotch. Jump, jump, jump. Mm, Gunther 362's right. Ain't nothing wrong with getting stuck in the 42nd century. Jump, jump. Well, yeah, there's the cannibals. Dale examined the machine, which, like all reliable time-traveling technology, was constructed entirely from items found at yard sales. Hmm. He considered for a moment, and then requested his colleague confirm his suspicions as to the cause of the machine's failure. They looked to Laddie, and then back to the machine. Jump, jump, jump. Yeah, it's what I figured. He explained you to Laddie the cause of the machine's malfunction through the use of mind-bogglingly complex equations, some of which he'd invented right there and then. The true crux of the problem, however, was... Is this yours? Yeah. His name is Brundlefly, and he's my baby. Dale performed what he termed a Denver Chrono jumpstart, and the machine leapt temporarily back into functionality. Laddie's poor paw returned to the room. Cannibals. Dale and Gunther 362 returned to a diner at the furthest end of the temporal vortex, leaving Laddie to spend some quality time with his pawpaw. Aw, oh, how sweet. Toodaloo.